Nationalism takes root. It started in England with the Glorious Revolution. That, re that revolution was glorious because nobody died. That is when the, they came together, the people, and limited the power of the king and the queen. There was no bloody revolution. Nobody lost their heads. And that's why we know it is the Glorious Revolution because it was nonviolent. Then, of course, you have the American Revolution in North America, which the colonists fought against England and her unfair taxation and limited of freedoms policy that she had against us. And then, of course, you have the French Revolution, which you just learned about, in which France and parts of Latin America and other parts of Europe all fought against the king, all fought against the established government in order to fight for democracy and more freedom. Now, the Congress of Vienna was a meeting that happened after the reign of Napoleon. And it happened in the city of Vienna, hence the name. And it was led by a guy named Mieternick, which was the Austrian foreign minister. And it had three basic goals. One, suffering, suffering the nation should be repaid. So all the nations that had basically wars and had battles need to be repaid all right the war debt needs to be paid the balance of power must be restored and balance of power is no country should be more powerful than another country no country has the right to bully another country and they want to make sure that none of this stuff happens again with the Napoleonic Wars the French Revolution they basically want to pretend that none of this happened and bring Europe back to the way it was before seven, the late 1700s. And they wanted all royal families returned to power. Bring everything back before this democracy. Bring back the royal families and pretend that none of this French Revolution and none of this democracy talk actually happened. The land is to be redistributed among the European powers, so France is surrounded by people in royal families who will make sure that they do not get crazy and do another revolution. And nationalism and liberalism are considered threats. They do not want any of this, I love my country more than I love my king. They want to keep the royals in power so that they... That never changes. They're trying to protect their own interests. They didn't want freedom for the people. They were not thinking about the citizens. They were just thinking about themselves. Now, when the Congress of Vienna happened, many things kind of reacted to this. There were many people who said, no, I like democracy. I like my freedoms. I like these natural rights. And they didn't want to give them up. So the monarchy is restored in France, but the citizens' rights are limited, and so the people fought back again and said, no, we're not going through this. We fought once. We'll fight again if we need to. And many other revolutions start taking place all over Europe because, the you know, as the saying goes, you can't shove the genie back in the bottle once you get them out. You can't pretend democracy isn't, you know, never happened. People like the taste of freedom, and they wanted more of it. And nationalism, besides bringing people together, can also tear people apart. And the Ottoman Empire and the Balkan Peninsula is a great example of this. Um, you had several different countries that were on the Balkan Peninsula in the Mediterranean that, and many different ethnic groups all living together in a very tight space. And they really didn't get along. So you had Serbia, which was the first to rebel. Greece came next. They wanted to rebel against the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottomans were getting weaker and weaker as this whole nationalism came in trying to divide up the Ottomans. And this is really going to cause them problems in the early 1900s when World War I gets started. And all of this nationalism, guys, is a major cause for World War I. We're laying the groundwork here for massive world wars later on. Russia gets involved. They want to control more land along the Danube River, which connects to the Mediterranean. Because remember, Russia always wants a warm water port because you can do a lot of trading in a warm water port. Okay, Russia does not have one, and they want one. That's why they're so interested in getting land around the Mediterranean Sea. 
This conflict leads to other wars. The Crimean War with Russia versus Great Britain, France, and Sardinia, which was a part of Italy. Then you have the Russo-Turkish War, which was Russia versus the Ottoman Empire. And eventually there's another congress or meeting um, in the city of Berlin that sets up three independent Balkan states and distributes other parts to European nations. Now, all of this is going to lead to the Balkans being called basically the powder keg or the firecracker of Europe because you had a lot of very unhappy people living in the Balkan areas and they were all waiting for something to happen to fight for their freedom. Nationalism can unify, and we talked about that. Two great examples are Italy and Germany. Both of these areas, Germany was a multi-kingdom nation and so was Italy. And through nationalism, they actually come together to form two very strong nations. And you'll learn more about that later when we talk about pre-World War I.